Good morning, everyone. I'm Julia Freeman. I'm a physical therapist. I work at Rogue Physical Therapy and Wellness. And this is a webinar to introduce amplitude training and kind of what it's all about and how we can implement it into our everyday life. So I'm going to introduce myself a little bit. Um, as I said, I'm Julia. I grew up in Southern California and Rogue Physical Therapy and Wellness is located in Fountain Valley, which is Orange County. Um, so I grew up from here. I went to undergrad at New York University in New York. I played soccer there um, and I found my love just wanting to help people and I found physical therapy because I had to do PT myself. Um, so I went to PT school at USC, so I came back here. My mom was super excited to have me back. Um, and then my last clinical that I did as a student was at Rogue Physical Therapy and Wellness. And the way, the way I kind of describe my love for physical therapy now is I see people come into Rogue and I see the potential that they can have. And a lot of people come in knowing Parkinson's is a progressive disease. However, I truly believe with good exercise, medican, medication optimization, hydration, just taking care of your body, you can have so much improvements in your life and have a better quality of life. Um, so at Rogue, we teach group classes and we also do individual one-on-one. -on -one. My favorite class that I love to teach is power moves and boxing. Um, boxing, you can see kind of in the corner to the left and then the two bottom pictures on the right um, are all little boxing drills that we were doing. And then in the top right, we have a power moves class. All right, so our objectives for today um, my goals for you is basically I want to describe what is amplitude training and what are the various types. Um, the second objective it would be understanding the importance and evidence of amplitude training. So why do we do it? Is there any support of research behind it? And then lastly, explaining how we can incorporate amplitude training into classes and just into real life in general. So how can you apply it right now and like apply it in the future as well? So what is amplitude training? So amplitude training with Parkinson's, I'm, her, I'm sure you've heard this kind of like description before. With Parkinson's, your brain is basically telling your body to move a lot smaller than you normally should move. So often people will try multiple attempts to do different activities and they can't really move. So let's just think about bed mobility. So when you're trying to get out on the bed in the morning, if you have a hard um. time, um, see. hold on a second, mute people. Okay. Um, so if you have a hard time getting out of bed in the morning and you're having to do multiple attempts, then maybe amplitude training is something that you need to implement into your everyday life. Amplitude training is just basically performing the movements as big and as effortful or as powerful as you can. So you're basically using amplitude training to combat all of the symptoms of Parkinson's. So not only is it moving big to prevent like a flex posture. Well, the one that's checked, it says microphone real. All right, please stay muted. Thank you. All right. Amplitude training is performing just movements as big and as powerful as you can. You are using amplitude training to combat those symptoms of Parkinson's. So those, that flex posture, you're using that amplitude training to get bigger. You're also trying to work on rigidity. So oftentimes with Parkinson's, we get a little bit more rigid. Our muscles get more stiff or kind of more stiff in our spine. So there's different moves that you can do to kind of uh, combat that rigidity. Also, bradykinesia. Bradykinesia is basically the slowness of movement. It's so if you find yourself moving slower, um, you can use that to, to amplitude training to move faster and bigger. If you find yourself taking short, smaller steps or smaller movements or hypokinesia, which is basically um, not getting to a target. 
as well as shuffling and freezing. You've probably heard some of those words if you um, see a neurologist or a primary care doctor. We're basically using amplitude training to combat all those. So there's two types of Parkinson's specific amplitude training. You have your LSVT big and then your power moves. So to the right, we have uh, this uh, comparing exercise in Parkinson's disease, an LSVT big study. So LSVT big is the original amplitude training for Parkinson's, and they have the most research um, where they can look at not only amplitude training, but they can look at other exercises and compare the two. And so what they've found is that amplitude training, so LSVT big, had bigger improvements or better improvements in the UPDRS score, which is basically a very long Parkinson's score. And then also just improvements in quality of life and stuff like that. So let's go over kind of the types of amplitude training. So we're going to sp first speak about LSVT big. LSVT big stands for the Lee Silverman voice treatment. So it started as a more speech treatment. And then they added this big version where this is more of an amplitude training for people with Parkinson's. So basically LSVT big is very intensive and effective individual treatment for people with Parkinson's to use their body more normally. So this is a one month intensive program where you are doing four sessions a week, whether it's with a physical therapist or an occupational therapist or both, and you're doing this for four weeks in a row. So you're getting high doses of really effective, intensive um, in treatment for therapy. You not only have that, but you are also expected to complete daily homework and carryover exercises where you're doing specific movements for uh, this LSVT big. The goal of this whole program is to recalibrate how you perceive your body with what others visual, visually see. So sometimes what I see in LSVT big I'm LSVT certified. Sometimes I notice Parkinson's affects one side more than the other. So when I have someone practicing on their steps and I have their arms come wide, sometimes one arm is up a little bit higher and I just have to kind of recalibrate them to get them more even too. So just having that reflection piece with a therapist that has this specialty is super, super important. Um, I have a video I wanted to pull up on YouTube of what kind of what is LSVT and we're going to go to 1733. I don't have the sound on. I want to be able to talk through it. So this is someone performing LSVT. Um, one of the movements that they work on a lot is a lot of weight shifting. So shifting your weight back and forth using a chair. Okay. Now there's a YouTube. Should I hit that? So there is a YouTube and I will provide with okay. these links after too. What? I will provide all the links after that, oh. after the presentation. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. So as you can see, she's really working on big steps back and big steps forward. And there's going to be a bunch of different movements. So if you've done LSVT before, you're probably familiar with those. The second amplitude training is called power moves. So power moves stands for Parkinson's wellness recovery. Dr. Beck Becky Farley is the one that created power moves to provide everyone with Parkinson's very specific exercises similar to LSVT to combat these symptoms of Parkinson's. So at Rogue, we typically use power moves here. Um, there's, if you ask me which one's better, they're, they're both equally as important and as great. Um, the LSVT big is more of an intensive individualized exercise program. Power moves, Dr. Becky Farley's biggest goal with the power moves is to not only integrate it in individual sessions, but be able to be able to create 
big classes um, and really incorporate ongoing high quality exercise and amplitude training for larger um, amounts of people too. So we are able to do power moves here, power moves classes, but we're basically doing general amplitude training as well. So in the power moves, um, there is a power up, a power rock, a power twist and power step. So there's four basic power moves and you're gonna do it in five different positions. So you'll do it sitting, you'll do it standing, you'll do it on your stomach, your back, and then on hands and knees. So I have a picture of Claire, which is the owner and founder of Rogue Physical Therapy. And I wanted to show you a few power moves in sitting today. But of course we have an ad. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do some power moves in standing. All right, should be right around here. All right, so for our power moves, we have our standing versions. We have our um, bottom versions. Okay. Oh, can't see the video. Okay, good. Love that. Let me stop the share and let me show the video. You guys should be able to see it now. All right. So here is the video of Claire performing our power ups. So there's different versions of the power moves. There's some in standing. So you have your power up here, really working on getting the biggest as you can. We have different variations. There's no sound. I'm just talking through it with you all. She works on some strengthening. She does some sitting stuff. She does some standing stuff. And then she gets on the floor. So getting on the floor helps stretch everything out. And it takes balance as a challenge, takes it out of it. So you're really working on just the quality and power of the movement. So that's what power moves looks like. Let me go back to my regular screen. All right, so you guys should see my screen now, perfect. So there's two different types, the so LSVT big and the power move. So we kind of talked about both of them. I'm actually going to go into more depth about the power move since that's something that we uh, teach here in classes and why we do them all, why it's super important and such. So the power moves here, they're at a glance. This is just basically all the five different positions of how you can do the power moves. Your power ups are for posture. So uh, like I said, amplitude training in general combats the symptoms of Parkinson's. So posture, flex posture, power up works on doing the opposite of it, getting nice and big. Your power rock is all about weight shifting. You can't do any movement without having to shift your weight. For example, sitting to standing, you have to shift your weight onto your feet in order to stand up. For your power twist, you're working on the rigidity of your muscles and your spine. So working on that flexibility, that rigidity, really stretching it out, getting that twist. And then lastly, our power step is working on transition. So oftentimes getting your feet up nice and big, nice and wide and stuff like that. All right. So let's get in a little bit more depth about what everything is. A power up works on that flex posture or that stoop posture. So you're actively stretching the front parts of your body, your flexor muscles that are pulling you in, you're stretching it out, as well as you're strengthening the back of your body. So all of your extensor muscles. So as you can see below, you have the different posture um, challenges. You have it on your stomach, on your back, on hands and knees, in seated and then in standing. So if you tune in next month when I do another webinar, we're gonna go through every single power move and so we're going to go nice and slow so that i can really show you how big we all should be moving so this is your power up working on posture then we have a power rock 
our power rock, rock is working on weight shifting or shifting your weight side to side, forward and back. Weight shifting is just the ability to transfer your body to one foot or to the other or to one area to another. Your power rock is basically just addressing the ability to weight shift, the ability to rock in different directions. Freezing and falls often occurs due to the lack of weight shift in your body. So if you find yourself, your feet are stuck to the ground, I want you to take a moment and work on shifting side to side until you could feel like you can lift one foot up and then begin walking again. So when I have people that have a lot of freezing or shuffling, I slow every, I slow them down and I just work on weight shifts. And you can start basic. If you see these um, moves at the bottom here, which are all power rocks, if you think that's way too much, don't worry because we can always ramp it down. We can hold onto a bar. You can hold onto your counter at home. You can just work on shifting your weight side to side. Being able to lift one foot and get into that single leg balance is what's going to help you walk better, take bigger steps, and also prevents freezing or shuffling. Your power twist is working on trunk rotation. So oftentimes we might, you might have heard you might have heard from people that you're not swinging your arm as much or one arm's not swinging the same um or you're not twisting as much so uh, the power twist is all about building trunk rotation um and addressing any rigidity or stiffness of your spine and your hips mainly so the ability to twist your hips and shoulders is super important especially when you're doing it in opposite opposite directions because if you think about when you're turning in bed or you're turning while walking or you're kind of turning and reaching for something or getting in and out of the car you all need your a body to twist and your hips to kind of go in that opposite direction and our fourth power move, which we can do in all five positions again, is our power step. This mainly works on your transitions. Similar to people that shuffle and freeze, I work on these transitions, these power steps, a lot. Um, these movements allow you to practice complete unweighting of one foot to transition a body to the other location. So practicing these large steps in different directions will help improve your bed mobility, your transfers, whether it's from the floor to stand um, or just turning and like in a corner of a room, stepping on and off curbs or stairs and just general balance is going to be super important. So why should we incorporate amplitude training into your exercise program? So like I said before, Parkinson's wants us to move a little bit smaller, take smaller steps. We're combating all those movements. Amplitude training is basically doing the opposite of that, getting bigger, moving bigger, moving with more intention. Parkinson's Foundation came out with a Parkinson's exercise recommendation for 2023. So if you're probably thinking like, oh, I do strength training, I do aerobic training, um, Parkinson's Foundation also recommends doing balance, agility, multitasking, and stretching at least two to three days a week. And the good news is power moves or amplitude training does all of that. And for some people, it actually works on strength as well. If you're someone that hasn't got down on the floor, well, welcome to amplitude training because you are going to be working on strength on the floor. For higher level amplitude training classes, it can also turn into an aerobic activity. But mainly what I like to say is that you're meeting your balance, agility, multitasking, and stretching you're meeting all of those criteria if you perform a power move class or do it with an individual therapist um, two to three times a week. So that's something that, you know, if you don't believe me, that's okay. But Parkinson's Foundation also came out with some guidelines of how what you should be doing in order to improve your quality of life. Um, and then I also put on the right, 
um, some testimonials from people with Parkinson's, mainly from Rogue here, um, why they think it's important for them to do amplitude training. So one said they couldn't get off the floor safely and working on the power steps and working on that transition into standing has helped them transfer from the floor to standing safely. Some people say it helps them move around bed better. Someone just said everyday ability is just those amplitude training stretches help just alleviate my tightness that comes with Parkinson's. Um, the class setting, so that's one option you can do for amplitude training, is such a positive experience because you get to work with other members who have the same disease and you also receive the, the support from struct instructors. Um, at Rogue specifically, one said that the instructor's education and awareness is at a higher level and allows us to participate in classes better. And I think what she was referring to there was that all the instructors here at Rogue Physical Therapy and Wellness, we all have our doctorates in physical therapy. So we're all doctors of physical therapy and we all teach the classes. So one of uh, our main jobs as physical therapists, we are movement professionals. We, uh, we are trained through our eyes um, to see how we can improve movement. And then lastly, someone just said that it helps strengthen and lengthen my muscles, improves my neurological pattern, patterning, and slowing my rate of Parkinson's. So those are really, really awesome things to just take in. Um, so how do we incorporate amplitude training into real life. So there's kind of two options that you can do. One, you can do amplitude training classes. So power moves, um, there's um, some sort of different form of LSVT that you can do that is actually for classes. And, or you can do one-on-one -on -one sessions with an LSVT or power certified therapist. I, st I state that specifically having a certification in one of the two um, amplitude trainings is because we you go through a very long course that works on all the different power moves or LSVT moves and explains why each of them are important for Parkinson's. So not only do you have a therapist that are certified in these different um, exercises, but they are also able to pick up very specific and minute details that someone that's more general might not be able to pick up as quickly. And so you have that one side of working on that power moves or LSVT exercises. And then you have to be responsible to continue to do lots and lots of practice, working on quality um, power steps, quality LSVT exercises, um, and also being intentional with your practice and starting to incorporate it into your everyday life. So being able to recognize, oh, I'm having trouble when I turn a quarter. How can I imp um, implement amplitude training into this specific activity of daily living? If you do those two things, I'm sure you guys will kind of feel just a better quality of life and you're gonna be moving bigger, you're gonna be moving better. So our mission at Rogue um, is basically to help support people with ongoing high quality and evidence-based exercise. So the classes we offer, um, we offer online classes. We also offer in-person classes. You have, if you get an online membership, you have unlimited access to live classes. Not only do we have exercise classes that are evidence-based, so cardio, boxing, power moves, all those fun things. You also have access to a speech class. So speech classes are super important for people with Parkinson's, working on your speech and vocal muscles, working on swallowing. We have speech class twice a week live, and then we have a full um, library of classes. So after every live class, we record them, and then we upload them into the library. We not only have unlimited access to the video library, we have weekly cooking classes to work on more plant-based diet eating since there's been evidence that's shown that more um, plant-based diets or Mediterranean mind diets help with symptoms. We have a monthly membership meeting where we check in 
We have a Parkinson's disease school watch party. So if anyone knows about Dr. Lori Mishley, she's a naturopath up in um, Washington. She is someone that also talks about a lot of evidence and research um, and talks about her own research that she's doing. And then we have a monthly educational meeting where we kind of just learn about something new together. And lastly, you get to get to know other people with um, Parkinson's and get to know each other. So uh, not only are we trying to reach Orange County with the in-person classes, but having Rogue in Motion online, we have people across the world tuning in, which is actually so fun because I teach a day in the classes, all the instructors teach is one day. And it's so fun to meet people all across the world and just get to know each other. So here is our schedule of live classes. Um, we have four Power Moves classes, um, all with different instructors. So you can always tune in for one, or you can just watch a recording if you don't like the live classes. Um, you have unlimited access to the library, like I said. And so that's just one piece. So if you wanted to do classes, there's also YouTube that has a few free classes that you can do. Um, if you don't want to do classes and you want to start with some more individualized therapy, you can find a Power Moves or an LSV tape. LSVT Big Certified Therapist on their website. So I kind of just took a screenshot and I also put the URLs below if you wanted to write it down or take a picture of it. Um, I can also share those URLs after. But basically on the Power Moves website, you would go to the Certified Professional Directory. And what I like to do is kind of search by region or state and you click what state it is and then you look and see if anyone is close by. And then for the LSVT Global website, you're going to go to LSVT Big. So you got to click the second one. The first one, the LSVT Loud, is for speech and language pathologists. So if you're someone that needs to work on speech, doing the LSVT Loud program is going to be great for you. Um, in this case, we are talking about LSVT Big, working, on physical, working with physical or occupational therapists near you. So um, we have a first month free. So I don't think it's 50% anymore. I think you get actually a first month free with our new exercise code. Um, and I will put that in the chat towards the end. But if you wanted to try out Rogue in Motion, um, we can do, I can send you guys the chat, um, the code in the chat. And lastly, we're going to open it up for questions. I hope you learned something. I can always go back to the slides. If you want me to share the slides with you, feel free to send me a private message with your email. I, I'm totally happy um, sharing these slides with you because I want everyone to get this information um, and hopefully learn something from it. Thank you all for coming. I hope to see you all next month. Um, for our Power Moves exercise webinar. All right, see you later.